Hello, my name is Vishwas Lele and I'm here to talk about uh, this concept of just-in-time permissions using the Azure rule-based access control. So before I explain what do I mean by this just-in-time, let's just take a moment to talk about Azure RBAC. So before uh, RBAC came along, of course, we had this notion of co-admin, where if you made somebody a co-admin, they pretty much had access to all the services within that subscription. So RBAC came along, you have this ability to assign granular permissions to users. And one important thing to note is that RBAC applies to the management plane, which means the operations that you can perform from the portal, operations that you can perform from command line interface. It does not apply to the data plane, which means it does not apply to the permission that you may grant someone to on a certain database, etc. So that's an important point to note. Core RBAC concepts listed on this slide, assignee is the user or the group to which a permission being assigned. Uh, permissions is the ability to perform certain actions, and I'll show you an example of that. There's this concept of not actions here as well. And not actions, think of it as a way for convenient way to give somebody a collection of permissions. Not actions is not a deny clause. Okay, role, of course, is a collection of permissions. So you don't typically, not, not typically, but you don't assign people permissions because there are far too many permissions. What you do is you logically combine them into a role and the role are built in and I'll show you an example of a built in role or there can be custom roles where you can combine the right set of permissions that make sense to you into a custom role. And then once you have a role, how do you assign it to someone? You assign it at a scope you can assign it as a subscription scope, which means it will apply to all of the resource group within that subscription. It will apply to uh, all uh, the resource groups, which means it will apply to all the resources contained within the resource group. So these are key concepts to understand. One other thing I'd like to point out is that the role definition, so let's say you create a custom role definition, that applies at the directory level which means that role definition then becomes available to all the subscriptions. That's an important concept to understand as well. Okay, so now that we understand these concepts, let me just give you some examples. So here are some examples of permissions and the way the, the naming works is the first thing is the resource provider. So as you know, we have a number of resource providers in Azure, Microsoft Network, Microsoft Compute, Microsoft Dot Authorization. So the first row in this example says star, which means this permission applies to all of the resource providers. The second example is it applies to all the resource providers, but only read permissions. The third example is it this permission only applies to Microsoft Dot Network. Again, all, on all resources and all types of permissions. The fourth example is this permission applies to a resource provider, Microsoft.network, on a certain resource type, in this case, network interfaces, and once again, all operations on that resource type. So you get this idea that all permissions have this nomenclature or classification scheme. In fact, what I did was uh, I ran some Azure CLI commands and dumped them out. Uh, here they are in, in Visual Studio Code. Just to walk you through a couple of examples, so this is showing you all of the roles that are available within my subscription, and these are built-in roles as well as custom roles. I'll just point out one of them. So this role happens to be the API Management Service Contributor role. And and this role has been assigned these actions. So Microsoft.API management, which you would expect, is the resource provider. And then on this resource, then we also have other resource here, like Microsoft.authorization, or if they wanted to uh, set up some alerts using insights, or they wanted to look at the status of the deployments, or if they wanted to create support tickets, which is Microsoft.support star. So this role has been accorded these permissions. Let me also very quickly, let's just go to a provider specific set of actions. So in this case, I dumped out all of the things you can do with this provider, Microsoft.compute. 
and you can see here these are the resource types so this resource type is a restore point collections and then these are the kinds of operations you can perform okay so in this case you're able to get the properties of a resource point you can delete a resource point and so on and so forth so now that you know the notion of resource providers and then resources and then the operations within these resources let's just go and talk about why you would want to do just in time RBAC permission. So here is the slide that, that I'm going to talk about why I think just in time RBAC makes sense. First of all, you of course want to apply the principle of least privilege. So you want to give people just the right set of permissions. But the second bullet talks about as you've seen, there are a number of permissions. There are many, many resource provider, many resources, many operations. And then you can have potentially hundreds of resources within your subscriptions. So that becomes very quickly a big uh, set of problem to manage. So on one hand, we are trying to apply the least privilege, which would suggest that we would want to give very granular permissions to, to folks on very specific resources within the subscription. But then when very quickly we run into this problem of how do we manage these rules in an efficient way. So uh, the other bullet here, bullet number three, is we find that more and more work around these subscriptions is being done by the DevOps team. So even though you looked at roles like the VM contributor or the API management contributor or the runbook operator, these roles are pre-built, but they're very granular. They're, they're purpose-built for certain actions. What we are finding is DevOps teams need a much broader set of permissions. And they often need these permissions in a context-based manner. So they are working on a certain problem. They want to restart the cache server, but they also want to look at the storage. And oh, by the way, they also want to look at some network settings and look at the traffic. So they need broad-based access, but that access is very context-based. And then finally, uh, if you're in the middle of night trying to debug a problem, uh, you don't want to wait for someone to give you the right permissions. So the key point I'm making through all of these bullets here is that uh, even though there's a need to do apply the principle of least privilege, but the number of permissions and number of resources are large, and then you also want to give people more mm, coarse grain access. So my suggestion is that what, what we, we ought to do is give people just-in-time permissions, which can be broad-based, but then get deleted after 30 or 60 minutes after that operation is complete. And that's where uh, came up with this notion of just-in-time rule-based access control. And here, in order for this to work, as I said earlier, this has to be automated and there should be some smart automation behind it for this to work. So let me give you an example. Uh, you might be a DBA and you want to restart a virtual machine. And, and you know rather than giving you a very granular access to a virtual machine that is running, let's say, IaaS SQL, uh, would it be better if, if you needed to restart the machine, you came to some sort of a portal, you requested access to that uh, permission, and because you are part of, let's say, an Azure AD group that tells us that you are a DBA. And then because that virtual machine has been tagged with an attribute which says this is running a SQL workload, we can put two and two together and automatically give you access to that machine and maybe give you access to that machine for 30 to 60 minutes. You go perform your operation, restart the machine or whatever you need to do. And after that, that permission is then revoked once that period expires. So that's what I'm calling just-in-time RBAC control. And let us just take a quick look at how such a thing can be implemented. So before I show you the demo, I, one last slide that I want to show you. And my demo is going to be done through Postman because rather than writing code, I'm just going to fire off a bunch of REST commands related to RBAC. And in order for you to understand and follow along the demo, this slide is important here. So 
as you can see here there is a hierarchy so you can the scope where this permission is being applied there is a hierarchy that I had previously talked about you can apply that scope to be one or more subscriptions it could be a resource uh, and so on and so forth so keep this hierarchy in mind as we go through the demo next so I'm logged into uh, the subscription as a as John Doe user and you can see here that if I look at all the resources I don't have access to any resources at all and let's just take our example that I mentioned in my previous slide that I'm a member of the DBA group and I need to come in and restart a machine or start a machine on which SQL Server IaaS is running how do I go about doing that so let me bring up Postman and I have a bunch of pre-configured uh, postman collection operations here which I'm going to execute and I'm just going to walk you through that so the first thing is I'm going to get a, a token for the graph API so this is needed uh, if I wanted to create a new group or look at the properties of a user and uh, there you can see uh, the call succeeded looks like and and we got some token back Let's also generate a token for the management API. These are all the REST operations that we'll be performing to uh, against the RBAC, and we got that token as well. Let's look at the user details for our John Doe user. And, and you can see here that this is, the name is John Doe, and this person is part of SQL DBA, and so on and so forth, okay? So we know that John Doe is part of the DBA user group. Now imagine that this, this person comes along and requests a permission on a certain virtual machine. We can go in and test if this user is indeed part of the DBA group. So let's just do a quick check here. And this value comes out to be true. So we, we just wanted to make sure that you know this person is part of the DBA group. If this person is indeed part of the DBA group, then we are going to go ahead and create a new role let me just show you so management API subscriptions we are going to apply to just this subscription within a resource group and the provider is Microsoft.compute the resource type is virtual machine and we create a new role the definition here and if I go further down here I'm giving them this ability to uh, um, against the Microsoft.compute virtual machines and I'm giving them a bunch of things because you know uh, they may want to also look at network they may want to look at the IP address they may want to look at the load balancer associated with that machine so I've given them a bunch of permissions so let's just go ahead and, and run this okay so it looks like we were indeed able to create this role our back dynamic role for SQL DBAs we were able to create this and we will be able to give the permissions that we talked about next thing we are going to do is create a group and this is a group that is created in Azure AD and now that we have created a new group at this point we are going to add the John Doe user to that group and if you're wondering why did I create a group why couldn't I have taken that uh, John Doe user and assign them to this role I could certainly have done that this extra step is what if I wanted to give more than one DBA access to this permission so I could rather than having to individually grant them permissions I put them in a group and then assign that group to that role so now that we have the group created uh, we also have the user assigned to the group let's just now assign that role to the group and let's look at this here so we are now assigning that role at the subscription scope and here's the subscription ID and postman has a notion of variables and you can look at here and these variables are all populated with certain values so you know what happens is when you run the previous command it certain sets certain variables which I'm using so in this case it applies to this subscription ID it applies to this resource group it applies to this VM and this is the the role GUID that we got after the role creation so what I'm going to do so it looks like the role assignment was complete let's just go ahead and try to verify I'm going to log out
and then log back in again. And hopefully we should see that now we have access to this VM. So John Doe has access to this VM now and they can come in of course once this loads they can come in and now start the VM or look at the other characteristics of this VM. Okay, let's just sign out and let's just complete our demonstration here by deleting this re role assignment. So let's say 30 minutes or 60 minutes have elapsed and we now want to delete it. So let's just go ahead and delete this role assignment. And once this call succeeds, looks like it did. Let me go back to the portal here. Let's just log back in again. And you can see here that the virtual machine that was available to us for a certain period of time seems to have disappeared once that period expired. So. You can see from this demonstration that we can take this idea of just-in-time activation, giving people just the right set of permissions and doing this in an automated manner so they don't have to wait long for getting these permissions and then deleting these permissions so it does not make it unwieldy for us to manage these permissions. So hope this helps. Do let me know if you have feedback. My Twitter account is vlele. Thank you.